Hello everybody. Uh, we are on part four of chapter four of my, of my UFO UAP book and um, a guidebook for first contact and let's wrap it up and let's add some closing thoughts that um, probably need to go back and add to the book at some point. Um, so another thing that I think we're going to learn by investigating this whole phenomenon of UFO, UAP, and all our other associated topics are we will know for sure that government and corporate factions suppressed information. Now, we know this happens already, but we will know that the scope of this is incredible and that um, I, I believe that we're going to conclude that in many ways we've been betrayed and that this has gone out of hand, okay? I mean, you can only support so much black budget and black ops activity without without knowing what's going on and have a positive outcome. I mean, the USA has done a lot of black ops and we have, you know, giant pits where money gets thrown in. And oftentimes the result for the nation is something terrible. And the result for the average man and woman on the street the average child, the average worker, the average citizen, and those that are above and below average is not good. Okay, um, for example, you know, we deposed um, a legally elected government in Iran, and we put the, then we had the Shah, and then, you know, something was going wrong with the Shah, and I think they were afraid of a communist revolution and then, you know, they helped Ayatollah Khomeini get in power and that turned out to not be good at all, all right? Caused us many problems and a loss of life and things like that. And, you know, uh, we, the taxpayer, the government doesn't run like businesses. Uh, it doesn't mine stuff out of the ground and then sell it itself by exporting it to other countries it you know corporations do this people work at uh, corporations and private businesses and so on and you know they get the money from us so it's it's our money we should know where it's going but then there's you know huge black budget things you're like where's that going well we can't tell you why well you know it's secret why is it a secret we can't tell you you can only have so much of this before it reaches the tipping point and becomes harmful, okay, becomes a negative and maybe deadly dangerous thing. For example, if these aliens are out there, if they're aliens, robots, whatever they are, and they have these capabilities and, you know, we haven't seen a military use of it, but what if they had weapons beyond our imagining? Just in terms of projectile weapons alone, a bullet powered by this technology would be faster and more dangerous than a bullet powered by gunpowder. Now, just imagine um, artillery shells by, by the billions constructed in the asteroid belt traveling, you know, much faster than our artillery shells. And with the same amount of explosive, they produce five times the output, but not not necessarily nuclear weapons that, that means they could level anything on this earth anywhere and not have to deal with fallout okay none of this is shown being used but if the government is interacting with something with that much power a misstep could cause millions or billions of lives or completely and permanently change the quality of our life we need oversight on this just as we do in any other area of government and i think you know whether it's through a psyop or just the natural progression of uh, american culture um a lot of this has these this hasn't really been asked by enough people and certainly not by enough well-placed people um it's kind of been mocked and turned into a sideshow and really intelligent people I know who you know if they would simply look at the facts would probably come to a lot of the same conclusions and start asking the same questions I have 
get really mad when you talk about it. They think, you know, their friend is going insane. And I don't feel insane. I'm, I'm able to live my life and not do very many insane things. I feel just as capable as anybody else, right? But there's this taboo. And the dichotomy between a necessary secrecy and an unnecessary secrecy will come to the forefront and maybe we'll make some changes. Maybe the public will get together and, you know, use the system. The system has ways of changing things, uh, not just elections and things like that. You know, Freedom of Information Acts has really proved useful in this topic. And the culture is changing. Now, I want to address an issue, which is that, you know, what if knowledge of this... Um, technology, this presence causes panic, causes ontological shock. If you're not familiar with the phrase ontologic, it's ontological is like basically pertaining to the knowledge of existence and existence, right? So ontological knowledge is awareness of your own existence and, and of, of existence in general. Physics is really involved with that, right? So First of all, this may have been true when this was instituted. We live in a very different world now. Um, people barely blinked when the Navy came out with a revelation that, you know, the videos and confirmed it was real and that none of this had a real explanation. People barely blinked when we did that because it was kind of like during COVID, if I remember, and uh, there was just a lot going on. And the culture has advanced. We're a far more secular society. If you look at attendance of houses of worship and the number of people that are unaffiliated or say they have no religion or, you know, people can switch religions and go from being atheist to religious and religious to atheist without fearing for their lives anymore. Um, science fiction has certainly progressed to where people, you know, instead of being heavily threatened by concepts like this, are amused or interested. So I think that is not necessary anymore. And if, the, if there is that, you know, there are still some people and demographics and factions within the world who certainly might react to a panic. It is, it, the government is capable of telling us who to be afraid of. Now they need to tell us there's a whole new reality. Uh, if they're capable of, of telling us, you know, um, statistics on how risky driving a car is and diseases and you know if the government is capable of telling us hey these are these are how elections are run let them do their job it's time to you know buckle down and start doing your job and educating the public and introducing us to this reality which we the people who pay their salaries who theoretically we're the bosses we need to know okay you have no power over anything you do not you are not aware of and have no knowledge of you do not you do not you do not if you're living in a neighborhood and you don't know that it's populated with jaguars and tigers who don't fear man they're all man eaters and woman eaters right and you just stroll around at night not knowing this you are far more likely to be killed and mauled, maimed if you survive. There is no benefit in not looking at the thing. Uh, I, I came up with a loose structure. You know, I said, imagine you're walking down the street and you see a large guy, big, huge, muscular guy. And you have to know that he's there. You look because any man that big could be a potential threat. No matter how big you are yourself, if you're a equally big man, then he's equally threatening. You need to be aware of that. Now, human beings are quite deadly. A very small man with a knife or some similar weapon can do you quite a bit of harm. So you look, you make eye contact. You don't want to appear too submissive or too aggressive. You let people know that you're tracking them. 
Same thing if you're walking down the street and, you, and now this guy could become your friend. He could become your enemy. He could become your executioner or he could be neutral. But you at least need to know where he's at. You don't, you don't want to bump into him. You don't want him to bump into you. You want to see the facial expression. Now let's move on. I'm, I'm a guy, so I'm going to use a guy's example. So all of you women watching, just reverse the polarity, okay? If I'm walking down the street and I see a beautiful woman, all right, very stunning looking woman, I'm going to look, I'm a man. I will make eye contact. I will, I will let this woman know that I see her. But I will also not stare at her, not leer, not do some kind of threatening behavior because I don't want her to feel threatened. I don't want any woman to feel threatened unless she poses a threat to me. So polite interest. Now I'm going to start gauging the facial expression and the body language to see how she responds. If she's responding negatively, I just move on. I don't want to keep staring. Okay. If she smiles, I smile back. It's very simple. Now, I'm walking down the street, and I see a big dog, a large animal. I've got to look, because a large animal can pose a threat. Dogs can be very dangerous or personable. Depends on how they're raised, what their past life was like. Certain breeds are bigger, and you know some are a little bit more aggressive with other animals or with people. So regardless of what it is, I need to be aware of it. I need to look at it and see what it's doing. And then it's going to see what I'm doing more than likely. I need to project a number of things. You know, you see the way certain guys walk around. I think some women get frustrated with it, but it's very necessary. We need to project a certain amount of strength and a certain amount of submissiveness, a certain amount of engagement and a certain amount of disengagement it's a balancing act so we can function in society now imagine if i'm walking down the street and i see a creature the size of a hippopotamus like nothing i've ever seen and it's it's despite its great bulk it also has what looks like technology technological artifacts clothing things like that it's something i've never seen it's big enough to hurt me that may have technology that moves like it's intelligent I don't know what its body language is I don't know what its facial expressions are or if it uses facial expressions does it communicate in sonar I don't know any of this I had better look at the the re smart response isn't saying it's not really there <laughs> and then mocking people who say what is that I'm like, oh, you're crazy. Only crazy people see that. Yeah, but can't you see the evidence? Well, it's obviously, you know, some type of illusion or or maybe we're, we're, we're having a mass psychosis. That's what it feels like looking at this topic. It's a little crazy, okay? We still may, here's what we will not know. We still may not know if they're extraterrestrial. We may learn more about the phenomena and we may gain a little bit more knowledge about its technological nature and still not be able to determine if it's purely extraterrestrial. I mean, what if there was a civilization of humans in the past that got this technology and, and operate in hiding, what I call a crypto civilization? They could be hiding in our on our planet or in our solar system or even outside of our solar system maybe they left centuries ago but they maintain some kind of contact here if it's an AI unless we get to open it up and look inside and investigate all the bits and pieces we may not know if it's inhabited or not right and um If it's extra dimensional, how would we know? Okay, only by investigating will we know, and that would require a deeper level of investigation and more time and more resources. But what I'm saying is, we haven't really looked at it as a civilization. To my knowledge, if something is going on in the military industrial complex, in the government, or in a private corporation, we don't have much knowledge of that now do we and i think we as 
citizens and taxpayers and and we the people who this whole system is allegedly supposed to serve we need to know and and a lot of politicians agree i mean both top democrats and top republicans and independents it is really spreading it is really time <coughs> um i also want to talk about one more possibility which is the von neumann machine if we go to the ai hypothesis we still have to find out is this simply a group of ais that have always been here and the same ones or are they constantly renewing themselves is it a von neumann machine a von neumann machine is a ai computer robot whatever you want to call it that not only can do a primary or secondary task but it also can make replicas of itself so imagine a bulldozer a highly advanced computerized robot bulldozer that can not only bulldoze it can also i don't know um dig mines and you know um harvest plant and harvest farms but it can also make other bulldozers and those bulldozers have the same capacity so given enough matrix which is raw material sufficient enough and containing those elements that this machine would need to complete all of its tasks or at least the task of making more of itself given enough matrix it could make an indefinite number of itself and you know for example if you had von neumann machines that could survive on jupiter we could throw one or two in jupiter and like a seed it would just populate all of jupiter and start using the hydrogen the water the carbon and whatever else is in there to make stuff and do stuff and also make more of itself and if there is an ai presence if it's all robots and computers the asteroid belt and the outer solar system is ideal we think of like pluto and and sharon and these small icy rock rocky bodies but there's thousands maybe millions of rocks and comets and clouds of stuff organic compounds certainly lots of water ice and so on and so forth and you know tons of nickel iron and, and elements out there that i mean you could harvest it and make anything and it still would be fairly easy to hide given our current level of technology and the fact that we don't really look there much right so um and i also want to talk about the silurine hypothesis again which is what if sometime around the time of the dinosaurs or before there arose a non-human technological civilization that got off planet and didn't leave a trace and then you had the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs so if if it's them that you know if they have a continuous history of what happened on the planet my god the things we could learn and we would need to know about this because if they have these capabilities they could wipe out life on earth again there's no reason not to look at this and not to try to communicate with whatever this is ignorance is not bliss ignorance is dangerous ignorance is not happiness ignorance is peril and if you have the chance to learn about a thing and you know that it's important to learn it and you don't learn it you ignore it you're punishing yourself I, I've always said ignorance is its own punishment and the ignorant punish themselves if they do not seek to learn and to not be ignorant. I'm not saying stupid. I'm not saying unintelligent. Ignorant is mostly not knowing, but the root word of ignorant is ignore ants. If you, if there's something that you know you don't know and it you feel like there's too much cost in knowing and you know maybe there's social stigma and you choose to ignore it even though you begin to suspect it's important to know and critical then 
that's negative ignorance. You're willfully ignorant, and we can't afford that. Sticking our heads in the sand is not a survival strategy. All right? Well, folks, it's been an inter interesting talk, and Chapter 4 is over. We're going to keep moving on with these videos. I hope you like them, and uh, have a good night.